Hey, welcome to another video in our A&Q series. Now, whether you're here for the first time or maybe you've watched others of our videos, I hope you'll notice that in this series, we tackle questions and those answers stir up a lot more questions, which is often the case when you're dealing with important questions, right? Well, today's is no exception and here it is. What is Lent? Now, depending on your church background, that word Lent could stir up all sorts of thoughts. Maybe Lent makes you think of of, of giving something up like chocolate or dairy or meat, or how about attending a church service with a pastor or a priest who then you know puts ashes on your forehead, or maybe you think of fish fries and church gymnasiums or fellowship halls that are just a little bit too warm. Are we getting somewhere? Perhaps the word Lent itself stirs up feelings. Now let's talk about that for a second. The word Lent, it really comes from the, I think it's the old English word Lenten and it means spring. So this is something that happens every spring. But for some of us, when we hear the word Lent, it'll stir up feelings of guilt from our past. Maybe you tried to give something up one spring and for whatever reason, it just didn't stick and a family member, or maybe it was a church leader called you out and they even shamed you for it. Or it could be that you've had a really positive experience with Lent or you have no experience at all. No matter what your thoughts are on this, uh, this, this moment in, in, uh, in the calendar for many churches, I want you to think about for just a second, the purpose of Lent and why parts of the church around the world still practice it. Lent, for many people, is a period of fasting, which means giving something up. Now that typically starts 40 days before Easter Sunday. For you history buffs, while there's evidence that parts of the church practice some sort of pre-Easter fast as early as the second century, most historians date the beginning of this practice back to the 300s AD, maybe even a century or two after that. But the point of Lent was for followers of Jesus. Now this is folks who have surrendered their lives to him. The point was for them to prepare their hearts, to remember their savior's death and to get ready to celebrate his resurrection. And traditionally, this preparation would involve intentionally and voluntarily giving something up or fasting from something during the weeks leading up to Easter. Now, I just said two words that I think we should really pay attention to. Fasting for Lent, whether it involves food or uh, watching TV or social media or video games or whatever it might be. This fasting needs to be intentional, which for me makes it meaningful and it must be voluntary. Jesus didn't want to burden us. He invites all of us to come to him so that he might give us rest. Well, that means if this act becomes a burden that starts to rob us of joy or weigh us down with guilt, then I think we've missed the heart of what Jesus was saying and we've missed the point of Lent altogether. So what does this mean for us? Well, for starters, don't feel any pressure to observe Lent. Some Christian groups practice it, Others don't, so it's fine if you choose not to. There's nothing in the Bible that says you must practice it, so you know, don't let anyone force you or coerce you on this, and, and, and don't let them tell you that this is absolutely a commandment in Scripture. It's not. But for those of you who do practice Lent, I'd say this, make sure it's personal. Go back to the words that we were mentioning a, a moment ago. Find something to do that's intentional and meaningful because the last thing you want is for this to become like an empty ritual and a religious hoop that you're going to jump through a spiritual box that you just check off the list you see what that means is that when you now move into this uh i, I would love for you to do it in a spirit of worship this is about us preparing our hearts for easter and when we do this, we want to remember the abiding, sustaining, and if I could use uh, an early church leader by the name of Peter, if I could use his words, we want to remember the living hope that we have in Jesus because of his resurrection. I guess the last thing I would say to you about this is I see Lent as a time of repenting or turning back toward Jesus. This can be in small and private ways. It can be in big and drastic ways, but it's not out of of fear or shame, it's instead us looking to the cross and remembering what Jesus did for us. So we do read the scriptures, we pray, and perhaps we do fast. 
but all the while we're leaning in and longing for a kind of intimacy with God in these weeks that are leading up to the celebration of Easter. Now we can do this in community, we can do this privately, but our hearts and our motives are always to draw closer to the God who loves us so. Now, if you have questions about any of this, as always, post them in the comment section. Maybe it is a question about uh, the, the evidence for the resurrection, resurrection that I was just mentioning. Uh, maybe it's a question that we haven't even brought up yet, but I hope that you'll uh, stay in touch with us. And if you haven't subscribed yet to this series, we would sure love for you to do that and stay tuned for the next uh, video that we have where we'll continue to answer questions that you all are bringing to us. Until then, Thanks for joining us.